Welcome back to the Polishing Podcast. My name is Nico, otherwise known as Nico All Powerful. And this week, Trent is not with us um, because he just doesn't have time, which is, you know, something that happens. Real life gets in the way. But I'm joined by my wife, Allie. My wife. <laughs> what? Hi. <laughs> Wait, why did I say it like that? Yeah. <laughs> but so basically, anytime Allie's on the podcast, we talk about superhero stuff. So mm-hmm. anybody who doesn't want to hear about that, go ahead and just click off now. Unsubscribe from the podcast. You can go. I don't care. Um, <laughs> a little extreme, but yeah. I respect your viewpoint. Look, if I, it's like if the podcast I listen to, they're allowed to go. If you own a Lamborghini or listen to loud dubstep, you can unsubscribe. Then I'm allowed to tell people that they don't. They yeah. can just go if they don't like superhero stuff. Everyone has their limits. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we're gonna talk a little bit of superhero stuff. Uh, if you're new to the podcast and you're listening through Twitter on the Podbean website you can find the podcast on itunes spotify stitcher google play and the podbean app um just search the polishing podcast you have to put the the in most things because i don't know i for whatever reason if you do polishing podcast it doesn't come up in a lot of spots so don't forget that and uh yeah that's about it um let's get into it i guess there's not a lot of stuff to go over uh We've got comments on the website and stuff. I don't want to go over those until both Trent and I are on the podcast. So anybody who's left comments recently, I'm sorry. Because last week, not last week, last podcast was with Moggy. And now it's with Allie. <laughs> so unfortunately, I'm not going to read the comments this time either. Um, if you are mad about that, take all of your qualms up with at Pixelated Apollo on Twitter. Anyway, <laughs> that's right. I'll throw them under the bus. <laughs> Um, so we were going to talk about a couple movies. Mm-hmm. Um, which one did you want to start with? I say we start with, um, Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse? Yeah, because that came out before. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. We about. Yeah. Um, so, and it's been a while. The last time we came on here and talked about superhero stuff, we sort of talked a little bit about Infinity War, mm-hmm. and we talked about Black Panther a little bit, um... And I talked about Iron Fist season two, which unfortunately, like R.I.P. all the Defender series. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's because they're like they're yeah. taking everything back to the Disney Plus. I think it, Disney it, Plus is what it's called. Yeah. yeah, which is like fine, but also not fine. I th- the shitty thing about it in that regard is that Disney Plus probably won't do like r-rated like because yeah. those shows would be like tvma or all mm-hmm. like basically r-rated movies um or hb like hb i think game of thrones is tvma isn't it i think so yeah i mean it's on hbo so yeah i don't even know what the rating system is like or if it's different from that, but. i think it's the same because it's still cable i would imagine it's tvma yeah so but disney has said that it wasn't i think have they've said like they've gone on record to say disney plus won't have any of that kind of content on it and it's like who wants to see a punisher series that's not that nobody nobody wants to see a punisher series without blood and death yeah i mean i think like people have said like you could still do interesting stories about these characters without right the gritty violence and like hyper violence sometimes yeah but it really helped serve some of the shows like especially the punisher with uh, the way the violence is and how frank reacts to it which is basically doesn't right. <laughs> it, it helps juxta juxta how do you say that word juxtapose juxtapose yeah. oh okay um everyone else's reaction against frank because they're like jesus and he's just like covered in blood and like whatever <laughs> um yeah so uh, but um, on top of them some maybe saying they're not going to do, like, MA or R-rated things on Disney+, Plus, um, there's also the fact that they can't do anything with those characters again until, like, 2021 or something. Like, they have to wait X amount of years before they can use those right. characters from the Netflix shows anyway. Yeah. So, who even knows if we'll get Charlie Cox and John Bernthal and... Um, Kristen Ritter and... Yeah, and... Um, Mike Coulter. I yeah. mean, we can do without Finn Jones, but that's okay. I mean, yeah. He was fine, I guess. I mean, he was better in the second season. Well, yeah, because they stripped him of his powers and gave him fewer lines. So, Spoiler yeah. alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. but, but season two was just so much better that it was just a shame. 
<laughs> just a shame. Oh, and Punisher season two was pretty good. Yeah. And Daredevil season three was good. Daredevil season three was good. Back to the the non bullshit, not centering every fucking thing on Elektra yeah. <laughs> um, stuff, which was nice. Learning about Matt's parents more, so that was neat. And then after season three of Jessica Jones, that'll be. The, that's the last that's, thing. That's it. That's the end. I'm very sad about that, but I'm hoping that that means that Jessica Jones season three will be really good. Do you think they're gonna write it with an end? I have no idea. Because you think after, like, because they've been filming it, but you think, well, that got canceled, and right. then that got canceled, right? So that you think they would end it instead of like, because Dead Devil season three ends, kind of. Like, it's done, but it could have picked up. Yeah, it seems like it could have very easily been there would be another season. But since Iron Fist had already been canceled, mm-hmm. and Luke Cage had already been canceled, I think, by that point, I think we all knew. Yeah. And then Punisher down. came out. And that doesn't have a, like, end. Right. It almost feels very much like another beginning. Yeah. Because they're actually really growing Frank's character in that season. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, and good night. And I'm yeah. like, no. <laughs> so who knows? I mean, Disney also is going to be owning Hulu on top of their Disney Plus thing. Yeah. So it's conceivable be, since, you know, Fox and they're own, now owning Fox mm-hmm. that they could it, put anything that's more violent on Hulu. Like, I, it would not surprise me if they went. Well, I mean, we own Deadpool now, but it's not right. going to be on Disney+. Plus. We'll put it right. on Hulu, on the Hulu right. movie stuff. Yeah, because they put plenty of, like, MA and R-rated stuff. I mean, Hulu even produces original content that is... Yeah. Isn't... No, Man in the High Castle is Amazon. No, yeah. but, like, Handmaid's Tale, oh, Harlots. Yeah. I think they've made, like, a horror series or whatever. Like, those things would all be rated R or MA. Yeah. Um, and they're on Hulu all the time, so... Yeah. so... It's not that big a deal. Yeah. But yeah, so RIP those things that, you know, I will be forever sad that they're ending. Prematurely, in my opinion. Um, and then we wanted to talk about Into the Spider-Verse, which mm-hmm. was really great. I feel like you should talk about it from a perspective of, like, a, someone who grew up as a Spider-Man fan. Because it was great for me, and I loved it for a lot of reasons. But it felt particularly emotional for you, I feel like. Like, you seemed to really tap into it. So I was curious, like, what about it felt really true and like to Spider-Man and his stories, right? And also what felt like different in a good way. Well, I'm just, just to preface, if you haven't seen Into the Spider-Verse, it's actually about Miles Morales, um, Spider-Man, and not Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. That's like a pretty big... What, yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? Pretty big change? No. Difference. Like, not, like when you're like... Trying to make sure somebody's like, oh, before you go, like, see this thing, you should know it's this. Pretty big point. I don't know. I don't. Really, I don't remember the word. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it's about Miles, and I actually read all of Ultimate Spider-Man up until the first couple of issues of Miles as Ultimate Spider-Man. So in Ultimate Spider-Man, it's Peter Parker, Spider bites him. It's not radioactive. It's genetically mutated. Mm-hmm. Um. And I mean, you get kind of the same thing, but they make they made sure to like say there's a difference in the comics at least. Um, this entire story takes place when Peter's in like sophomore year of high school. He's 16 the entire time. Mm-hmm. Dies. It's also, spoiler alert for a 20 year old comic at this point. <laughs> uh, he dies at the hand of the Sinister Six and, while trying to save MJ and Aunt May, um, and then Miles. It, and then it's like it's like oh Peter died, that like he and he's gone in this universe. And then shortly after they did Miles, where he's hanging out with his uncle, and so the way they do um, Uncle Aaron, otherwise known as Prowler, Prowler mm-hmm. in the comic when I was reading it, because it could have been revamped because I think they absorbed the Ultimate Universe into the six one six, which is like the standard. Mm. Um, Marvel Universe in the comics, if I'm not mistaken. At some point. I don't know when that happened, but it did, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but in, originally, Miles was, you know, just a little um, black Latino kid who's like 13. He's like really young. He's really young. Um, that is hanging out with his uncle Aaron eating ice cream. And his uncle Aaron had actually broken into Oscorp. The spider climbed into his gear. Mm. And when, like, 
his stuff was just on the couch and Miles was on the couch like with his hand on it and the spider came out and bit him while he was at his uncle's Mm -hmm. and then that's how he got his spider powers whereas the movie differentiates it by like he's like doing um, graffiti and the spider is like just hanging out below ground. Yeah, it's just there. I don't remember. Because they're near why. the uh, the big facility that Kingpin built. Yeah. So the main thing with that is I'm pretty sure they age Michael uh, Miles up because he seems like he's like 15 yeah, or something he's like in high school properly. Yeah. 13, he would be in like eighth grade. Yeah, especially since Gwen Stacy from Spider Gwen is in the movie because the whole reason's into the Spider Verse. There's a bunch of different Spider people, but the main yeah. one is Miles. Yeah. Um, and she's. In high school, in her comic. So, like, to make them even, like, closely resembled and also kind of a love interest thing going. Flirty, little flirty eyes. But also, like, seems like they're just, like, platonically friends. They're kind of, like, toeing the line, like, "Mm, we're not sure what we want to do with them yet. Right. I mean, either way, it's, like, a very charming relationship. Yeah. So. But, so, that, like, it differentiates that from, like, but, uh like the into the spider verse movie to differentiate some stuff but it also has like a lot of stuff true to the comic where in the comic miles does take a test to enter a lottery to get into that school mm. just like in the show on uh, the movie where he's like i'm only here because i won that lottery mm. um which i was kind of cool to see but basically um you know as like from reading the comic to seeing the movie i don't know i mean like i didn't it didn't really have that much of an effect on me because even though I read Miles's comic a little bit, I didn't read a lot of it. Yeah, and he's not the Spider Man I grew up with, mm-hmm. whereas Peter Parker is. Mm-hmm. Um, which I mean, he is in the movie. Uh, two of them. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Chris Pine and Jake Johnson. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, like because apparently it seems like mm, the like Jake Johnson Spider Man is like mm-hmm. from. The like it's almost like the Sam Raimi movies, mm. like he's like supposed to be like that Spider Man, like okay. from our world basically, right. because like when he came into Miles's dimension, there's a bunch of different things. Like instead of Coca Cola, it was something else, cola, and mm. like um, there was oh, it's like FedEx, it's like Red X, and like mm. you, like you can tell that Miles's Earth is not like. It's recognizable, but it's different. Like, it's a, it's clearly a different dimension. Uh, whereas Peter B. Parker is what he calls himself because his... I mean, Peter Parker's middle name's always been Ben, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, so, but they make the differentiation because the other Peter Parker's in the movie. But anyway, it seems like he comes from the standard um, MCU... Kind of, well, not MCU, but like standard Earth, where it's like it's Coca Cola and you know mm-hmm. all that stuff. Anyway, um, it's cool to see an older Spider Man trying to teach a younger Spider Man, Be- especially an older like kind of schlubby, kind of down on his luck, dad bod Spidey. Yeah, I was into it wearing sweatpants. <laughs> I liked that a lot. It was pretty funny. It honestly just felt like they just got Jake Johnson to be himself for a while in the booth. They were like, oh, by the way, you're Spider-Man. He was like, I'm what? And then they just shut the door. (laughs) Because I feel like that's just who he is, perhaps. Or maybe he's just going to play his character from New Girl forever until he's dead. I mean, maybe. would be fine. That guy's hilarious. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, I liked it. I don't know that it was... Like, I don't know that it, like, was as meaningful to me as you mm. thought it was because mm. like I recognize the fact that that movie's going to be better for a lot of other people mm-hmm. because they get to grow up with Miles being their Spider-Man yeah which is a thing that you know not a lot of people get to do like there's different Green Lanterns that people identify mm-hmm. with depending on when you read the yeah. comics and stuff there's uh, I think Kyle Rayner is the second one? I don't know. Mm. Green Lantern isn't a character I know that well. Um, I should probably use a character I do know. Like, um, well, Batman doesn't really work because it's usually only Bruce Wayne. Um, but maybe you have a particular actor that portrayed Bruce Wayne that you feel tied to. Like, that person's Bruce Wayne. I guess, but like... Some I people really... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, the be- like, best thing for that is like Christian Bale because he's the one that's done it the most times. <laughs> I don't know that 
that's true. Wasn't there a guy who was in... Michael Keaton did it twice. Twice. What about George Clooney? He did it twice, right? Hey, his doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't count. That movie's hilarious. <laughs> Batman and Robin is... He's only been... I think he's only been Batman once, and it's Batman and Robin. What? Is that the one where he just, like, makes out with Michelle Pfeiffer the whole time? She's just, like, licking all over him as Catwoman. Wait, maybe he was twice, That's then. what I'm thinking. It is twice, because I think he was in Batman and Robin, and I think the one with Catwoman is a different movie. The, well, yeah. The Catwoman was with Michael Keaton. Oh. They wear a mask. I can't tell. They're, like... White men. I don't what know. Michael Keaton and George Clooney don't look anything alike. I don't know. I've slept since then. Um, I'm just saying people get attached to <laughs> of their particular version of Batman in a similar way, right? Even if it's the same character, they're all portrayed really differently yeah. in different eras. Or people will get attached to who like is their Joker. Yeah. Like I know a lot of people who like really strongly identify with. Didn't Mark Hamill do the voice of the Joker in the animated series? For yeah. A while? For, people got really attached to him. There's a lot of people who are my age who think it's like absolutely sacrilege that I have no attachment to Mark Hamill whatsoever in any capacity. I mean, people but think... Especially as the Joker. Yeah. Like, his voice is the best and his laugh is the, the best. Yeah. Is it, though? I, I don't know. Mm. I'm not... I'm not one of the people that... Hey, like... You're not I mean, a Mark Hamill stan? I mean, I don't... I mean, I've watched Star Wars and... Um, not what's that damn show? Regular show where he plays a albino gorilla named Skibs. <laughs> he's had an illustrious career. That man. It's <laughs> really he's, just out he's, here doing. He's a good voice thing. actor, honestly. He's, I didn't know that was him for the mm, longest time. Yeah, well, he's not a good regular actor, so I guess he's got to have some talent. <laughs> um, not that I have any opinions. Mark Hamill stands don't come for me. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, so I feel like it's, it's nice to have a different yeah. character or a different actor or a different voice behind a, a, an icon, right? Yeah. Like that. That's like, oh, hey. Yeah. Now Spider-Man looks a little different in my brain, mm-hmm. um, or moves a little differently or talks a little differently, which was cool. I really loved the, I think in particular what's won the movie so many awards is the animation style. Oh, yeah. Because it's a, a bunch of animation styles all put together. So the mm. basic premise um, being that, you know, there's this, like, dimensional fuckery. And uh, all the spider people from several different dimensions end up in Miles's. Um, and then his Peter Parker is killed. Mm-hmm. So um, while he's, you know, he, he gets bitten by a spider and he's also trying to, like, you know become someone you know that he would be proud of right the, the, the old spider-man would be proud of whatever well they also i mean have like he the like he was like i made a promise to him yep. before he died yeah he's like trying to keep that like dying wish thing yeah. um but so uh the different spider people have different animation styles some are pretty subtle mm-hmm. like the difference between him and Peter B. Parker yeah. is pretty subtle, yeah. but there are some differences, mm-hmm. and between he, him and uh, Gwen, there are yeah. some differences. The biggest differences, though, that looks so cool are between like him and Spider-Ham, who is the best thing <laughs> that has ever happened to Bit- cinema. It's, it's a spider uh, who gets bitten by a radioactive pig. Yep, <laughs> and somehow survives and uh, becomes John Mulaney, so... <laughs> Uh, so if you ever wanted a cartoonish superhero that's a pig but also really a spider, um, John Mulaney is here for you mm-hmm. um, because he's an actual cartoon in real life. Yeah. Um, so and that's hilarious. Fucking Nicolas Cage, <laughs> Spider-Man, as Noir. Spider-Man Noir, and he has like he can't see color, so they give him like a Rubik's cube. It's just hilarious. <laughs> um, and uh, there's also uh, Penny Parker. Yes. Yeah, and she's like a small like Japanese girl who pilots a robot anime yeah so yeah so she's this like anime style character it's just really interesting so and then like Miles is almost sort of hyper realistic in some shots and then there's more comic booky shots in other spaces but like the story is good the music is excellent Mm -hmm. um, but the animation is just so gorgeous that it's like I mean it's ridiculous like how amazing it looks and during fight scenes where there's like different characters with different animation styles fighting it still looks amazing and fluid um, 
so that's pretty that's pretty great. I really like the movie. Yeah, and yeah, I went into it being like, oh, this is gonna be cute, but like I don't particularly have any spider spidey feels. Yeah. But I came away going, oh, I really liked that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, this was really this was a lot of fun too. Yeah. It, it felt like it injected a little bit of fun that uh, perhaps has been missing from some of these like real gritty movies they've been doing lately. Well, to be fair. I mean, yeah. we're dealing with half of all life being dead. Mass extinction. It's pretty bad. Well, I mean, nothing's extinct. It's only half extinct. Yeah, but like, <laughs> it's, it's a mass dead. extinction event. It's like a huge <laughs> amount of dead people. Um, so, people, all life. Yeah. Does that mean he got rid of half of the trees? I don't know. I literally will find out in a couple <laughs> will of weeks. We? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? It's next week, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. What's today's date? Yeah, next week. We should probably buy tickets. I've told you that like last week. I know, but I'm lazy. Um. So yeah, it was like kind of nice after the Infinity War sads. <laughs> yeah, it was sads. Yeah, except for when Bucky just dis- disintegrated. <laughs> you you gotta bring it up every. Time. I have to bring it up. I'm very glad he's got his own show now. I'm so furious. I cannot <laughs> tell you how angry I am. They're gonna give him more dialogue. Why? Did you see the Tumblr post where it's yeah. him, <laughs> him and Falcon? Yeah. He's like, it's your turn to be Captain America. He's like, dude, I'm so tired. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I just don't like the way they've written Bucket. Maybe if they give him a show, they'll give him an actual character trait. Just one. If you could just pick one, he's that gonna would be, be great. His character trait after Endgame is going to be sad because Steve is dead. Right, because his one true love is dead. And that's, if they don't play it like that, they're just playing it wrong. It doesn't make any sense for them to love each other that much. Also, I don't. Out. That's not an. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. I assume right. both um, Captain America and Iron Man are going to eat it. Yeah. I don't know about Thor because I feel like Chris yeah. Hemsworth actually likes playing Thor now, so I think yeah. he might be like, mm, "Hey, Russos, <laughs> um, I know I didn't really like playing Thor up until a couple years ago." But then y'all let Taika Waititi direct me. So, <laughs> so now I want to live. You actually let my comedic chop shine because truthfully, Chris Hemsworth is an excellent comedic actor. He is uh, absolutely. I mean, my hysterical. roommate Thor was hilarious. That was a really funny, and like, I feel like most Marvel fans like didn't haven't even like seen it. Like people I know who watch the movies are like, oh, this is a thing. I'm like, look at these random shorts of like this man and his and his weird roommate like that shit was so funny but didn't Taika Waititi direct those too I have no idea but they came out like forever before Ragnarok so mm. I have no idea if they were like directed by or if, it, if Chris Hemsworth was like I have the costume and well he didn't even I don't, like, he didn't wear the costume did he for some of it yeah oh okay I just remember him because there was one where he's with Mark Ruffalo mm-hmm. right or right because it's the one about like email. Yeah. Where he's like, <laughs> send a send... dove. <laughs> yeah, send a dove. It's like, what the hell? Uh, a raven, not a, a dove. A raven. And I want to say there was even one with Doctor Strange before. Maybe, maybe I'm confused. That's. I mean, there was the teaser at the end oh, of no, Doctor yeah. Strange. That was a teaser at the end of Doctor Strange, which was hilarious. They had a good interplay. Um, but yeah. So I guess the next thing to talk about is our main bitch. That main bitch, yeah, we already have a poster of her, um, Captain Marvel. I really like Brie Larson, so I was poised to Same. like this movie. It's <laughs> hilarious. Like, we're married, but Brie Larson is the background of your phone. I actually like that. It would freak me out if my face was on there. It's like yours just says another chubby cutie. Because that's me. I'm just another chubby cutie. Well, that, I it's mean. It's true. It's who I am inside. Is Brie Larson who you are inside? I would love that. <laughs> I, I wish I could <laughs> pelvic thrust 400 pounds. <laughs> She's a fucking beast. So here's the thing. Did you see the thing where Chris Evans was like, did you see her back? <laughs> <laughs> Chris Evans is like, I am deeply impressed. I've been training for this shit for 10 years. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, what was interesting, I think the far and away the two best things about Captain Marvel were the relationship between Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson, mm. which, especially now that Unicorn Store is out, we know they've, they've actually been working together for a few years, Man. which explains why they have such great chemistry. Like, they clearly just have a nice um, sort of vibe yeah. on film. Yeah, so they just seem to be, like, kind of quirky and funny, and I like that. Yeah. Um, and the other best thing was Goose, obviously. Yeah. Like, because Goose is my favorite character in the MCU now. He's a flirkin. A flirkin. Where did he go? 
I don't know. Because, like, they reveal, like, so if you haven't seen Captain Marvel, obviously spoilers. I mean, this one's actually kind of, we should probably say spoilers because. Yeah, because it's, like, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that and it's not even on Blu-ray yet. So right. it's not, like, whereas Into the Spider-Verse has been on Blu-ray and on digital. Right. But Captain Marvel's not even out on digital yet. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's been more than. No, it came out last month. Yeah. Because it was literally Captain Marvel, sandwiched between that and Endgame with Shazam, which is DC, mm-hmm. which apparently is good, but we didn't see it. No, we haven't seen um, it. And then Endgame came out, like, maybe, I think it's literally, like, a month and a half after yeah. Captain Marvel. They're like, here's this movie, also sad. So. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so spoiler yeah. alert. Deep spoilers. So, at the end of Captain Marvel, Goose... Who is a flurkin, which is an alien that looks like a cat. But is not a cat. But is deeply, deeply dangerous and a little sassy, I think. A little well, sassy. Well, yeah, there's even the point where Samuel Jackson's petting him, and he's just like, no. He just <laughs> uses his paws. But... <laughs> he's like, no, no, sir. Um, so he's really great. Um, and he vomits up the Tesseract onto uh, Fury's desk. Mm-hmm. And then that's like the end of the movie. And it's like, so what has Goose been doing? Chilling on Earth. 20 years, yeah. For 20 years, like, maybe he got locked in some S.H.I.E.L.D. thing somewhere, but then you'd imagine he would have made waves in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. somehow. Or maybe he's just out living like a cat somewhere, just chilling <laughs> as a little orange tabby making friends. Um, but he's not. He's dangerous, and don't let him near you. Yeah, he was very dangerous, and so, I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> a flurkin looks like a cat, <laughs> yep. but if you haven't seen the movie, is actually an alien that can i don't like i don't even under, like it opens its mouth more and all of a sudden tentacles and stuff come out of it mm-hmm. and it has a pocket dimension within inside within itself so it at one point eats the tesseract and puts it in its pocket dimension also what happens to the people it eats are they just are they in a different plane of existence within like, within the flurkin because he like kicks the shit out of some of those Cree and, and then he just, just swallows, swallows them, them. Yeah. and I'm like either they're dead or they're heavily beaten in a pocket dimension inside <laughs> this creature <laughs> so just they're like wandering going to around die. space like being yeah Fury's pet like I don't know it's yeah. like very strange also young Coulson Cole dad baby Cole dad <laughs> I just really like Clark Gregg a lot like a mm. lot a lot and I'm really glad that he will be in the next season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. even though maybe he shouldn't be I'm wondering what plot nonsense they're gonna have for that to come up why is that is he leave um, S.H.I.E.L.D. at the last well yeah so spoiler for the the end of um the most recent season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. but he dies Wait, what? I forget exactly the mechanism, but he, like, sacrifices himself for the team, because of course he does. Did and I miss the season? It happens, like, right in the last episode, because there's he's, like, dying of something. It's something. I don't know. There's what? some blah, 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 MacGuffin nonsense, what? and he's dying. What, what season is this? The season five? And but then like, season six is coming out soon, but he's gonna be in it as someone who's not Coulson. But... It's very confusing to me. What was season five of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I don't... I forget. It's been a so, but is that not the Ghost Rider one? No. Oh. It's so been that, like two seasons since that. I mean, then I've missed two seasons. Yeah, then you have missed some. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a good show. Yeah. I'm really very glad that it exists. Hmm. Um, but yeah, maybe Coulson. You know, what's great about, um, one of the things that's really great about the film, too, is that they do a really great job making Coulson and Samuel L. Jackson look younger. Yeah, it's weird. It's kind of trippy in yeah, some points. Because I'm like, I know some of this is makeup, but not all of this is makeup. Yeah, because there were the behind-the-scenes photos where they were wearing, like, Samuel Jackson had the dots on his head, mm-hmm. face, so they could go through and CGI his face. Yeah, but it looked real the whole time. Yeah, it was I, like, whoa. Yeah. That's, like, earlier than Pulp Fiction Samuel L. Jackson. Like, yeah. he looks young. Um, yeah, he and Brie Larson have a really wonderful chemistry, so... The movie had, like, a lot of little quips that were cute. Mm-hmm. Um, Brie Larson worked out like a fucking boss. She was, like, carrying a Jeep and moving she forward. She carry it. She pushed it. She pushed it. Whatever. She picked it up with her hands and pushed it. It's like carrying, but backwards. I don't know. Did she do that? Or yeah, did she just she put was, her... like, holding on to it. Well, yeah. And pulling hold... it up and pushing mm-hmm. it. There's an angle on that Jeep. I gotta, I gotta rewatch the video. You gotta rewatch the video. There's an angle on it. And then, you know, like, lifting up 400 pounds with her pelvic thrusts so like 
that's incredible. Like and Then she gets a cookie and falls over. Right. <laughs> she's like, I need that cookie. I'm done. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but she's just like a boss yeah. in that way. That like, I feel like Gal Gadot had similar things, though, I guess, since she has like actual armed forces training yeah. for Gal Gadot. It's like, right. So she's just like getting back into her like israeli army <laughs> shape right. um but brie larson is like i've been like a wafy dramatic actor for a while yeah. <laughs> um my last major role was where i played a woman who'd been kidnapped and stuck in a room for years was that her um, last one because <clears throat> i thought there was a movie that came out after that where she was like woody harrelson's daughter i don't remember but i would love to see that movie because i love woody harrelson he's hilarious i don't think it's a funny movie oh yikes I mean, he plays dramatic stuff. Yeah, but that almost makes me sad. Because he's such a goofy-looking dude. I'm I mean, like, I don't yeah, know. he's goofy-looking, that's for sure. Yeah, pretty goofy. So, yeah, I really liked it. I mean, it was an origin story, so it had its low points as yeah. far as, like, story beats. Yeah. But I thought the cinematography was really good. Like, particularly, they had, like, really excellent little, like, moments and shots where yeah. they're actually like doing something instead of just being like, and we're going to film this in the most standard way possible. do 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 um, and the fight scenes were cool. They had yeah. a lot of cute, like, cool moments with the fight scenes. I was a big fan, especially yeah. for that being Marvel's first attempt to have a woman be the main character. Yeah. I think they did a good job. Yeah. It was a weird thing to see people's reactions to her being like, she's bland and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, did you watch the movie? There's a part where she goes, blah, at an enemy. Right. Like, she's funny. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, she's like goofy. She doesn't take herself very seriously. But I also, feel like if I mean, I mean, she like what else could she have done to express character traits? Like what? I mean, there are points where she does, but she also like cracks jokes at the same time, right? But that's just Marvel's formula, right? Which is kind of annoying, but which is why I'm okay with Endgame if it's more serious and the only person kind of jo- joking around is Scott. Oh yeah. Uh, otherwise known as Ant Man. Well. AKA the killer butt plug. <laughs> I was going to say his real name, but I forgot oh. it in the middle of going. Um, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Yeah. Who hasn't aged in 20 years. My thing with that, though, is like, also, yeah, he's 50. The fuck? Um, dude happens doesn't. when you moisturize, okay? Stay out of the <laughs> sun, stay in your lane. Uh, but my thing is, like, why is he so happy? Like, he doesn't seem... Like, right. in all of the trailers, everyone's like, we gotta avenge the fallen, we gotta do this. And he's like, man, he's good at speeches. It's like... <laughs> I'm just imagining his family can't be dead. Because well, if his family was dead, I feel like it would be a different We saw story. Hope and her family get dusted. Right. But maybe... He, but he might not even know what's going on. Because he's... Somebody's he the, gotta tell him. Uh, right, but like, we don't know how quickly he leaves the quantum realm and then shows up at the Avengers. Like, he doesn't... I don't know. But see, my thing is, it's like that scene where he's like, man, he's good at this, is when they're about to leave. Right. Because they all have their, like... So he's got to know what's going on. Yeah. I don't know. Also, those trailers are so confusing. It's like there's that shot of them all walking towards something in those suits. They're really trying not to give shit away, which is good. Yeah. Because I think the biggest problem I've had with some of the trailers is just how many times you've watched the trailer and been like, don't watch it. Yeah. There are spoilers in it. And I'm like... I mean, to be honest... The first Endgame trailer shows Ant-Man is fine. So, like... Right. That was already a big enough giveaway. I'm like, you could have kept that a secret. Yeah. So, I mean, if you haven't seen the trailers and you want to go watch the movie, don't watch the trailers, yeah. obviously. Because, I mean... Like, they, but they're, they're cutting the trailers so out of, like... Yeah. Per, I don't know. Like, the word... Like, cr- out of time. Out of chronological order yeah like because it's like there's that scene where they're all getting ready in those suits and then they show them in a quinjet or something of the mm-hmm. same thing not in the suits and then there's that scene where they're it's just like recently they've had the trailer where you can see thor iron man and captain america's like legs mm-hmm. and they're not in their new suits it's like when the fuck do these suits come into play and for what reason <laughs> Y'all just made these badass white suits, wore them to walk down the hallway, and then took them off immediately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, and also, no, there's a bunch work. of shots where it's like everybody that not Captain Marvel, and then everybody plus Captain Marvel. I'm like, how many of these shots is she actually in? Right. And is she not in? Right. Because also, people are like, because in the very first trailer, it's like, oh, 
I know we're getting a little off topic of Captain mm-hmm. Marvel, but she's in the movie, so fuck right. it. Um, like, the very first trailer is, like, Tony being like, oh, if you somehow hear this message, Pepper, I've always, it's like, whenever I try to go to sleep, it's always you. Mm-hmm. And, like, it seems like, oh, he's trapped in space. How is he going to get home? And right. then next trailer, he makes it home. But it's like, how much of that is true? Because right. in every Infinity War trailer, it showed Hulk running with everybody in Wakanda. Mm-hmm. Which turned out not to be true because right. Hulk doesn't want to come out and play because right. he got his ass beat. <laughs> and he's like, mm, my dignity and pride's broken. Right. No, no banner. Right. Because <laughs> the Hulk is nothing if not a large toddler. He's this incredible sulk that entire movie. I love it. Little emo baby. So, like, the real shot is Bruce Banner in Hulkbuster armor. Right. But it's like, you know, those CGI characters, they just flip a little switch and it's like, oh, well, that's a different one. Okay. Yeah, but like, even in Thor Ragnarok, all of the trailer showed him like souped up and like, yep. like that Thunder fresh God. Cut. Yeah. With two <laughs> eyes, yep. come see the movie, he gets his eye cut out. Right. So it's like you can't even trust the trailer necessarily, especially given that it doesn't seem like there's a clear narrative being constructed, yeah. which I guess is what I like that they're not giving away because I feel like most of the time they summarize the plot completely in the second trailer. Whereas I watched the second trailer for Endgame and I'm like, I still have no idea what the actual narrative arc of this is. I think going it's to just be. Avenge the Fallen. Like, it's literally, we can't get over this because all of our friends are gone and. It's kind of our fault. Yep, it is deeply their fault. So deeply, one hundred percent their fault. But so I think the whole narrative is well, like because like even in um, I think it's the first Avengers. I think Tony says it because in the last little teaser thing they put out, it's like if we can't defend the Earth, you'll be damn sure we avenge it. Mm-hmm. I think that's literally it. They're like we, there's nothing. Like what do we do? Either we can sit here and do basically whatever. Mm-hmm. Or we can go after Thanos and potentially... I don't even think they're like, oh, we gotta get everybody back. I think it's literally like, let's go kill him. Yeah. And that's it. I would be down for that. I think it's literally just a vengeance thing at that point. Like, it's literally, oh, we're the Avengers. Why don't we avenge our friends? I also, like, really, really want them to spend at least some time, and it looks like they might spend at least some time, going through, like, what is going on on Earth? Because half... of everyone just disintegrates. Yeah, I think I think the first trailer shows like Cap in like like a support group. Yeah, which is wild, and I want to know everything. I'm yeah. like, if that's not one scene in like a montage, isn't of it scenes, three hours long? Right. It's it's a Lord of the Rings film. I am salivating. Like I am so ready. I'm like, give me all of the world building on this around this event. Mm-hmm. Um, because it is so fascinating. And I feel like that's where actual character development can happen in someone like Captain America who hasn't learned anything in however many movies. And I'm like, just like, let him grow. Let him have some of like, he can only be I don't think he grows more from... articulate Superman for so long. I don't, but see, the thing is, I don't think he grows from we should be able to do whatever we want to we should go kill Thanos because all of our friends are dead. I don't think that's really character growth. I think he's just doing this if you look at it from that way really because i i don't see the captain america we saw in like captain america the first avenger actually avenging anything what are you talking about but watching his gay lover die right in front of him (laughs) might actually turn him into a more proactive human person i'm still sad they got rid of the beard yeah, truly, I care much more about the beard going away than Bucky, so. It's such a weird thing. It's like, oh, we, like, I get why he had a beard in Infinity War. Mm-hmm. They're, like, tr- like they're in hiding, all that mm-hmm. stuff. So I guess afterward, but, like, who the hell goes, oh, man, all my friends are dead. Gotta get a clean haircut. Like, no, you're de- you're gonna be real sad. There's no way he <laughs> cut his, he went to a barber that was still open. He's like, I'm one of the only barbers left. He's <laughs> like, all right, line me up. Like, what? I don't know. He was also growing up in the 30s and 40s where, like, being clean cut was also, like, very normal and respectful. So I'm imagining he's going to, like, events and funerals and stuff where he would want to shave his beard I just, culturally. I, it, I feel like it fits so much more that he would just be, like, fucking long hair, beard just in like this movie. Just, scruffed up and depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, his hair would just be longer at this point, really. Right. He would look like old Thor. Yeah. Which is fine. Just less blonde. And yeah. I'll allow it. Um, because that weird blonde beard they had on Chris Hemsworth was <laughs> unacceptable. But yeah. <laughs> he looked like a weirdo. <laughs> um, Anybody who's 
facial hair is flesh colored looks weird right i'm like oh yikes i'm like (laughs) they could have picked a slightly different tone that didn't blend in quite so much with his exact skin tone i'm Mm. like his whole face looks like a blob what are you doing it doesn't look like he has facial hair yeah i'm like just let it looks like he has fuzzy skin Ew, gross (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah so i'm 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 looking forward to endgame Mm-hmm. I know the bucket is going to come back, and then I'm going to have to look at his stupid face. Yeah, I mean, he's getting a show. See, the thing I hate is meta-knowledge of I the movie, know. because it's like Spider-Man Far From Home's coming out. We know there's a Black Panther 2 coming out at yeah. some point. You know there's a Doctor Strange 2. Well, we know that? They're making another Doctor Strange? Yes, they said they're making Doctor Strange 2. Wow. Because the first one did well. I know, but... Also, I mean, he signed a contract and yeah, they're nowhere near yes. finished with him yet. What are they going to do? Just like keep hiring Benedict Cumberbatch to be in a million movies? I don't know. Um, but, and then like we know the Disney Plus stuff is Wanda and Vision, mm-hmm. which is just called WandaVision. Like it's literally just WandaVision. And then like. It sounds like a. It's dumb. It sounds like a like a fan club for One Direction. Like it's the WandaVision. I don't I know. It sounds it. terrible. But, and then. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Falcon and Winter Soldier, and then the Loki show is just called Loki, right? I'm actually very excited for the Loki show, but that's because I think Tom Hiddleston's Loki is super interesting. Yeah, but my thing is like, well, we know those shows are coming out, but are like are these shows all going to be set after Endgame? Right. Because I mean, clearly Captain Marvel was set in the '90s before any of the other events, bef- um, except for Captain America. Right. Also, do you think she's going to fan girl over Captain America at all? I don't know, because she doesn't mention him or have any sort of, like, memorabilia of him or yeah, anything like that. Yeah, but when we see her in Captain Marvel, she's lost her memory. So she's just finding out who she is again at the end of that movie. That's true. But then she shows, like, and then, t- like, the spoiler, um, not spoiler, but the, not, not the second ending, but the first one after the credits is her showing up when the beeper is going off. Yeah. And it's like, but she was in the Air Force. Right. And Captain America was literally a legend in the military. Right. So you've got to assume that she would at least be, like, knowledgeable of Maybe this. Maybe she'd, like, heard of him. Yeah. But I could also see a world where she's like, cool, I'm more powerful than all of you combined, so. I don't know that I can be impressed. I don't know that she's more powerful than Thor right now. Well, she and Thor are at least roughly on par. Yeah, which is not good for Thanos. Because <laughs> Thor by himself. It's fine. Apparently the most powerful person in the Marvel Universe is actually Squirrel Girl. So yeah. So... That's, I mean, that's, that's not best, news to me. That's the best news I've ever heard. Yeah, she's beaten all kinds of villains yeah. that she shouldn't have been able to. And I'm obsessed with that. <laughs> it's every... I'm like, Squirrel Girl? Hell yeah. yes. Hell yes. She talks to squirrels. I love her. I don't know um, what else she can do, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. I I almost don't want to know. I want them to just make a Squirrel Girl movie and have her just, like, running around kicking ass with adorable little squirrels everywhere. That's all I want. I don't know. Um, But, yeah, so I feel like... But I also feel like the Captain Marvel's characterization, the way that Brie Larson is playing her, she's not a fangirl. Well, I mean, not, like, fa- not actual fangirling, but, like, she would be like, aren't... You supposed right. to be dead? Right? Aren't like, you a whole ice cube right now? Like, he's what's like, the- you are a legend in the military. What the fuck? Well, and but he's just like, had they already pulled him out of the ice by that time? No. When did they pull him out of the ice? Two thousands. Do we know that? Yeah. Because like we don't know. I I feel like I I didn't internalize how long he's like in shield asleep. Because well, I mean, uh, long enough that Nick Fury had always had his eye patch. When they got him? Yeah. They don't find him until way after she's gone. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's he was eye patched fury. Eye patched, yeah. And that's how we can delineate like pre Captain Marvel, post Captain Marvel. Yeah. Because we Fury gets his eye patch in Captain Marvel. Very end, yeah. Yeah. And it's hilarious. <laughs> I and mean, some people don't like it, but I don't whatever. whatever. I mean, I don't know that it was the most satisfying way they could do it, but it was but so there funny. There was literally no, like what And what I love about it is that he probably didn't tell anyone how it happened. So other people built it up to be this thing when really 
He just got... It was his own, like, low-key stupidity. But yeah. like... But that's the thing. He's a spy. He's never right. going to tell anybody how yeah. he actually lost his eye. Right. I kind of love that. It's like, we know that the mythology behind the eye patch is a little bit bullshit. Yeah. But nobody else knows. Yeah, they're like, he's got an eye patch. Right. Like, I don't know. He's just a tough bastard. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, he's a tough bastard, but that has nothing to do with the eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> he loves kitties, and oh. that flurkin is no kitty. No. Oh, he's like, look at this little kitty. I love Samuel Jackson's, like, talking to a cat voice. <laughs> so good. He's really, really funny in Captain Marvel. Like, yeah. genuinely, genuinely funny. Um, and I... I feel like they shortchange him so often, particularly in terms of dialogue mm -hmm. in the movies, that I'm like, please just stop giving him stupid ass lines to say and knowing that his like gravitas and emphasis will carry it because you say you want peace. I think you mean the other thing. I kind of think you mean the other kinda thing. I kind of think you mean the other thing. Either way, it's a terrible line. It's horrible. And it's supposed to be the one line. The whole scene is like built around him saying that line. And mm -hmm. I want to smack Joss Weed in the face every time I think about it. Did he write it? Did he write Avengers? I think he did. Okay. Well, then, yeah. Yeah. Literally, all of the things that I don't like about the MCU pretty much come directly from Joss Whedon. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. Um, it's like, we get it. You did Firefly. It was cool for like a second, but you hired Nathan Fillion, so your taste is terrible. And that's what I have to say about that. Um, you can tell Ali doesn't have opinions. Yeah, I have no opinions. I'm actually quite meek. <laughs> um. <laughs> that's why we're married <laughs> is because we're both timid and shy and yeah. reserved uh, uh, and we have no strong opinions uh, yeah we I guess we should also talk about Aquaman too because oh yeah we didn't yeah, yeah in the other podcast episode we mentioned the trailer for Aquaman and I said I was really skeptical about whether it would look good yeah because um, Justice League uh, the Justice League villain looked so god fucking awful well, yeah. He looked so bad. Uh, but Aquaman looked amazing. Yeah, I don't... One of the things I don't like about Aquaman is it feels like it's four different movies. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, we got the underwater stuff. Oh, we got the looking for the trident stuff. Oh, we got the underwater stuff again. It's like, can we calm down? Well, actually, no. First, it's submarine battle. Yeah. Alaska, I think. I don't know where the fuck yeah. his dad lives. Um, and then we have, uh, like... Atlantis. Then we have them in the desert and Italy, yeah. and then we have Atlantis Part Two, but it's the the chummy area. I don't remember. It's with crab people. The um, what do they call it? The trench. Yeah. The trench. Wait, wait. No, the trench is the evil guys, the ones that oh, are yeah, like all true. feral. Right. I don't remember what the crabby ones are. Yeah. The world building was one of the coolest things about the movie, but it mm -hmm. also felt a little. It was just, a, yeah. It was, I mean, I get why they were doing so many different things because you kind of had to. Right. But yeah, Aquaman was really good looking, and it was kind of like some people were like, "I didn't like the way they like floated around or anything." But for me, it looked like, I mean, they animated their hair, like and, his beard hair. Yeah, like was his, animated to move in the water. Yeah, what? Like who? That shit's incredible. It's wild. Yeah, it looks really good. And I love Jason Momoa a lot, and I felt like he brought a lot to it. Like, mm -hmm. in some ways, there were spots that felt like they just kind of let Jason Momoa talk because he's, like, a weirdo. <laughs> um, and that was good. Like, the scene where he's, like, could have just peed on it. Just feels like a thing that Jason Momoa <laughs> would say. Yeah. Whether that was written in the script or not, he, like, carries it off so naturally as this sort of, like, person with no pretension. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things I liked about it because I feel like Aquaman... If he were played by, like, if the the guy that played Ocean Master and him switched roles, right, yeah. it would have been so cheesy because the guy would have looked so, like, over the top and taken himself so seriously. And it just would come off as really pompous. Mm -hmm. But because it's Jason Momoa and he looks like what he probably is, which is, like, a dude who just, like, threw an axe and then pounded back a Guinness and rolled onto set, that, like, he's... Which he did. Well, I mean, he did the first part. I don't know about rolling on the set afterward. Right, but um, but he's like a, a, an official like Guinness ambassador. So he's just like seen everywhere drinking glasses of Guinness because he's just manly like that, I guess. And <laughs> he's just like very cool and very down to earth. So, and then also like the idea of having someone who actually is indigenous and has like spiritual and cultural connections to the oceans. Yeah. Playing Aquaman felt like a particularly nice touch. Yeah. Because there are moments where, like, like he's even doing parts of, like, a haka as Aquaman, which feels like 
really in line with the character and his connection and respect for Hmm. like people and like one of the reasons why he's a hero is because he has like this balanced respect for humanity and for nature Hmm. um which is really kind of a cornerstone of some of that spirituality and culture which is really neat um and i just think he did a great job and he looks great soaking wet so well, that and the whole thing with his tattoo that they just elongated yeah. across his body. Oh, it looked so good. Oh, it looked great. I like that they didn't cover up the tattoos. I like that they just, like, made more tattoos. They were like, oh, actually, that's a great, let's just keep doing more of that. <laughs> um, well, I'm pretty sure he was like, I gotta, you gotta put more on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure that makeup trailer situation, though, granted, the amount of money I would pay to be those makeup artists, just, like, painting his body for hours. Jesus Christ, bro. I would be terrible at it, which means I would have to do it for a long time that's also you <laughs> wouldn't be paying you would be getting paid to do it that's true but i would pay money to do it oh my god <laughs> i don't have much but i can throw in like 30 bucks you're ridiculous <laughs> um but yeah, yeah no aquaman was cool yeah it was like fine yeah it was I, definitely a better dc movie than suicide squad for example well yeah um <laughs> but you put the bar f- under the ground, so like... What are you, some kind of Aquaman? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want a line like that in every one of the movies now. If they're going to do it, I need them I need them to go big. Like, go big or go home. I wonder if Every he's... single one. I what wonder... are you, some kind of Shazam? I need that. That's what I want. <laughs> well, Shazam is the wizard, not Billy. And it should be Will Smith every time. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, as genies, like, what are you, some kind of Aladdin? <laughs> He's like, how do you know my name already? I just want Will Smith to go into every single film ever made. <laughs> just like, what are you, some kind of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? <laughs> <laughs> well, the British people are going to get mad. It's the um, Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone. Why did they change it? I don't know. As a kid, I just sort of believed that they didn't really say Sorcerer. They said Philosopher. But I think it's because Nicholas Flamel, I think, actually was a Philosopher. Who? And he's Nicholas Flamel is the guy who makes the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh. I think he actually was a real dude. Hmm. Um, so I think that's why they call it the Philosopher's Stone. But they're like, oh, the Americans, they don't know anything about history. So we'll just call it the Sorcerer's Stone. That's this doesn't make any sense because there's no sorcerers in Harry Potter. Right. They're just wizards. wizards. So I don't know. Unclear. It's it makes really no sense. the reaction. I'm sure there's, I'm sure J.K. Rowling has already talked about how... Oh, how he fucked the Philosopher's Stone? Right. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Shoved right, it up his ass. But they're in some sort of consensual gay relationship where one of them has Crohn's disease and the other one is black. And <laughs> She's just, like, trying to inject all of this diversity that... She's not... I mean, she's only doing it for clicks. She's like, oh, you think I got enough money? Nuh-uh. You were all gay the entire time. And I'm like, look, I'm here for an inclusive, diverse story, but you wrote a bunch of white people, JK. That's okay. That's fine. Just let it be a bunch of whiteies. Like, you fucked up. Write something better next time. I don't know. Like, she just wants to keep going back and be like, oh, by the way, you know, this thing that has absolutely no textual evidence to support it, and it's Mm. just, this is just me shit talking right now. I'm just going to keep retconning my own story. Makes no sense. But we're getting off topic. We are getting off topic. Uh, But yeah, so Aquaman, I think, was, like, good. I think it held up. I think Captain Marvel was better, and yes. but people were just sexist. Yes. Slam dunk. I think that's that's the tea. Because um, it was a well, better put together movie. Yeah. Brie Larson's a better actor than Jason Momoa. Yeah, she is. Which isn't a rip on him, but she doesn't hasn't she won? She's like, won an Oscar. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> listen, if you haven't seen Room, but you enjoy weeping. Um, or you need a good cry to get over, I don't Watch know. Watch Logan. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Logan, yeah, that. Um, but also, like, Room. That doesn't really work, because you have to kind of be connected to X-Men right, for 20-some <laughs> odd years. Yeah. Um, but Brie Larson's performance in Room was absolutely devastating. Like, it was so good that I can't ever watch that movie again, because I will just weep everywhere. Like, the, like, opening credits will start, and I'll just cry. Um... And, like, her work with the little boy. I think his name is Jacob Tremblay. He's, like, in a bunch of stuff now as, like, a little child actor. And I'm, like, really hoping. I'm, like, if anyone comes near this child with, like, heroin, I'm going to fight you because I need him to be good because he's talented. Um, But she was really, she's really spectacular. Um, And I feel like as a human person and as an artist, she just, like, takes herself a little more seriously as far as the craft goes. Um, not that Jason Momoa isn't putting in the hours, but it's like a very different kind of hours. It's a very different kind of attitude. Um, and I just think she's got more of the very classic acting chops. Um, I think she's, I mean, also she didn't get brought in to be like some tough guy actor. Right. Like his first, well, the first role that I ever saw him in was 
Cal Drogo in right. Game of Thrones season one. Where he has, like, no lines in English, so... No, he only speaks Dothraki. Right, except for when he rapes her on the seaside. So. Does he have, Does he say something in English there? He says no. Oh. Yep. I don't remember that. And then he rapes her on the seaside, so... I don't know why they did that. Yeah, because it's not even that way in the books. Yeah. I don't... I mean, granted, it's still pedophilia in the books because she's 13. But also, the Middle Ages... And high fantasy just operate under different rules. Right. I mean, I guess when the life expectancy is like 35, perhaps like whoa, the whoa, social whoa. standards are different. But I The don't only know. reason the life expectancy in the Middle Ages was 35 is because most bo- babies died, mm-hmm. which ruins the average. Mm. Yeah. That's why the life expectancy is technically low. It's if you made it past being a child, like an infant, yeah. you would live to be old, okay. like old. Well, that blows up that argument. Yeah. Um, it's still pedophilia and it's gross. Well, but, yeah, but it's, I mean. Yeah. Uh, so either way, it was going to be gross, I guess. This is really the thing. They just, yeah. like, made Danny a little older and then they made it rapier. Which doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I don't know. But HBO, I feel like, especially when the first season of Game of Thrones was coming out, they just, like, really luxuriate in these weird rape fantasy scenes. But the weirdest thing is, like, nobody was like, oh, man, you got to watch... Game of Thrones, this albino chick gets raped. Yeah. It was more like, oh shit, it's fucking uh, the main character died at right. the end of the first season. <laughs> the hero we were with right. on the journey with is dead. The protagonist that was the moral center is uh, decapitated. Yeah. So... Like, that's what made Game of Thrones like, yeah. what the fuck? Right. That- Everybody was like, we don't actually know how the story will recover from this. I don't... What is happening? Mm-hmm. Um, it really set it apart. No. And plus, it did have a lot of the... Because high fantasy is, like, labor-intensive and expensive. So to do high fantasy really well requires a, a high production value, I feel like. Mm-hmm. And HBO was willing to to put that money in from the start. So I mean, to be honest, they isn't the first episode you literally see do you see white walkers or yeah, just the white? first scene in the first episode you see whites and I think a white walker. Like just murder some dudes. And put them in that spiral thing. Spiral thing? The spiral oh, thing. They that do? we saw on the episode on Sunday. Oh. Okay, I didn't remember that. Yeah, yeah. I saw like some people on Twitter were talking about tracing the spirals and what they think it is. Hmm. So there are some interesting fan theories. I'm excited. Truly, I almost don't even want to know any theories. I'm like, I just want to see what happens yeah. in the last season of Game of Thrones. But, so, yeah. Like, the show starts with that and then yeah. doesn't do... Like, you don't... I don't think you hear anything about them the entire rest of that season. I think they do touch back on it, but it's not as intense and not as detailed. Because so. I think... is Because... It takes a while for them to get back there. And because a white gets into the wall. Yeah. And Jon Snow the kills nice him. Watch, yeah. But I don't... Does that happen in the first season? It might be the second. I don't know. Because the a way to me, like, to fuck with your audience is like, oh, hey, zombies. And then never... <laughs> just be One like, of the reasons why the show is so great. Because then you're... Like, at the end of the first season, you're like, right, so this, this moral center has been killed... But also, what about the fucking ice zombies? Like, what the fuck is happening with the ice zombies? Like, yeah. it's HBO. I know y'all didn't just forget that expensive scene you shot. Like, yeah. what's happening with the ice zombies? Um, one of my favorites is it like the end of season three or whatever, where people get like stuck uh, above the wall, and there's a scene where Sam is like hiding against a rock, and there's a, like an army of the dead like walking past him, and they just can't see him because of the blizzard. No, they like, look at him. Like a White Walker looks at him, oh. and he's just weeping. So he's just like, <laughs> and walk. <he's> like, <laughs> Oh. Well, that and I think, I mean, why, it's like, obviously, it's like, well, I mean, you're, like, I guess even, like, because now I'm thinking about it, it's like, I mean, the White Walker doesn't care that, he's like, he's not fighting back, what, right. what like, so obviously, like, well, I don't know what you would do good for the undead army, but also, clearly, you're freaked out, why don't you go freak out everyone else? Yeah, it's very interesting. I'm excited for the last season to... I mean, I'm sad that it's ending, but I'm also really excited to see how it ends. I'm very excited for episode three. I'm at three? I'm excited for episode two. Well, yeah, I'm excited for two, but I'm ready for this battle at Winterfell. I'm fucking ready. We gotta figure out what... <laughs> There's so many things that happened in the first episode. So many things! But anyway, oh. I think... I don't know how long this has been going. Yeah, me neither. Have we bored you enough? 30. Are you not entertained? It's about... 
58 minutes so far, Dang. so we can, don't have to end it yet. Yeah. Um, Do we have anything else to add? Uh, I mean, we got off track. We, we never really talked about Cap- Captain Marvel without mentioning other things. That's true. I just get really excited because, for me, what's interesting about Captain Marvel is how she's going to fuck shit up when she rolls up in Endgame. Because she's the boss. But I'm wondering how much she's even in it. That's fair. I don't know. What do you think? I don't... That's the thing. You don't have any ideas? Yeah, because, like, the trailer show her in some scenes, but we don't know when those scenes are, if they're even in order, what's going on in those scenes. We just know that she and Thor might fuck (laughs) because of the heavy eye contact they're making. I mean, look. I support it. If two people were gonna fuck... And it's not Captain Marvel and her lady friend, who's, like, clearly her wife. Like, what... (laughs) They're, like, raising a child together. There's, like, no discussions of either of them dating anybody else. Like, no one's saying anything, but for all the gays in the audience, I just want, I'll just <laughs> go ahead and speak for them. I was like, so that's her girlfriend, right? Like, I know we didn't say it. She keeps saying, oh, that's my best friend. But it's the 90s, so maybe she didn't want to come out to Samuel L. Jackson. Like, maybe, you know, maybe. she's one of the most powerful beings in the universe, but she doesn't want to come out, you know, as a, as a gay. But that's def. I'm like, that's her whole wife. Like, that's, maybe. I'm not raising a child with somebody just because, like, we can braid each other's hair, like. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's pretty gay is what I'm saying. Well, I wish some people were just friends. Yeah. But, but. some people can be just friends, like. Uh, like, who's just friends? <laughs> I guess Oh, technic- like, Black Widow and Hawkeye are just friends. Yeah, but they were so, like, you could see Avengers 1, it's like, they're totally banging, right? And then there, it's like Avengers Age of Ultron comes out, and it's like because Joss, Joss Whedon. Whedon is like, oh god, gotta make Black Widow even less interesting. <laughs> well, oh, gonna, she's attracted to Bruce. Well, well, that, and also like, oh, people complained that Hawkeye didn't have anything to do in Avengers. <laughs> he has a whole ass family. Right. It's like what? It's wild, but they technically, canonically, are just like very good friends. So still, I'm just saying, like it was definitely coded in the first movie. Like, mm, are they lovers? Uh, are science they bros are friends. They're not lovers. The science bros, they're just bros. See, they're friends. There's no sexual tension between Mark Ruffalo and Robert Downey Jr., which oh. is surprising because Robert Downey Jr. gives fuck me eyes to every single <laughs> character, except for Mark Ruffalo. I guess he's just not his type. Like the more of the dad bod, he's not going for that. Chris Evans and those pecs, though, he's down for Chris Evans. So was Haley Atwell. Did you? Because that scene in Captain America where she goes to touch his chest, I don't think she. I think that was just her reaction. Yeah, yeah. She that was not like planned. She oh. just was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I am witnessing peak performance." <laughs> That's what peak male performance looks like. It really, it truly, factually is. Like, write that down. That's what that shit looks like. Um, and I'm just like, same girl. In fact, I thought that was a restrained reaction. I mean, yeah, she. She brought a She's like, oh. <laughs> like, but she just... didn't touch him. She's like, oh, no, right. can't. She's like, mm, that's that beautiful chiseled oil body. I thought he was married. Chris Evans? Yeah. I don't think he is. Well, I mean, I know he's not now, but I mm. thought he was. I don't know. I still wouldn't touch that bod. <laughs> I don't know. They kept it in the movie, so. Well, yeah. <laughs> because it was a perfect reaction. Yeah. Um, so you, you can Look at this tiny man go into the thing. Look at this big man come out of said yeah. thing. But yeah, so they're friends with no sexual tension. Wait, who? The science bros. Oh, I thought you were saying Chris Evans and yeah. Haley Atwell. No, no. <laughs> It's like, like, like their whole thing was that they were going to... Will they, won't they? We well, can it wasn't all even pretend. will they, won't they. It was like they wanted to, but then... Um, What's-her-face came along. Um, oh, my goodness. Oh, the lady. Natalie Dormer? Yeah, her, that character. She just mm-hmm. wanted to make out with Captain America. Which, like, same girl. But Haley Atwell and Chris Evans apparently had poor communication skills. <laughs> So they weren't able to just talk about it. Um, and then she shot a gun at him with a shield that he didn't know would work. To be honest, that was a slight overreaction. Um, but, like, I get it. Um, but, yeah, so there's some platonic Would she things. feel bad had that shield not worked? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
she might have felt a little bad. She might have felt a little bad if she straight up shot Captain America. <laughs> she just killed um, Captain America for kissing someone when they super were not like together. There was clearly no negotiation mm-hmm. of like an exclusive sort mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, I'm like, I know this is the 40s, but y'all still like speak in English and like can communicate your expectations like that. And he respects women, so come on, right? Like, just give give this particular guy the benefit of the doubt. Captain- Most of them know <laughs> this guy. Yes, Captain America was drinking respect women juice when he thought it would make him not skinny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I just, I just respect women. I don't know, this tastes real good, guys. Do you want some? And everyone else in the 40s was like, nah. We like sex. And then he's like, I'm going to fight everybody, but I'm <laughs> five foot and weigh a hundred pounds, maybe. <laughs> a little tiny Chris Evans. A little bobblehead looking, because his head was slightly too big for the body mm-hmm. that they had him do. It was, it's weird, because it doesn't, like... That would look better now, mm-hmm. but it doesn't look that bad then. Mm-hmm. Like they that was they did a good job because if that looked way too weird, it just wouldn't have worked at all. The whole movie would have been shot from there. Yeah, I would have been uncomfortable from the jump. Yeah. Um, also, got off track again. Yeah. Sorry, but I'm just saying, like Captain Marvel and Maria are dating. Like obviously, Maria. That's Maria. That's oh yeah, name. Maria Rambo. Maria Rambo. Yeah, and she's a boss, so there's that. And her yeah. child is adorable. And, like, literally, her child is, like, much lighter skinned than her. I'm like, she looks like the biological child of Brie Larson and the actors playing Maria. That's not possible. I know that it's not possible, but it still looks like... I don't know. <laughs> the coding is all there. For, I'm saying as as the gay who would, who would be signaled by that. Half gay. Half gay who would be half signaled by that. I got a <laughs> you would still full be full strength, signal. I got a full strength half signal from that. Um, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but I was like, oh, so they're gay together. I mean, Neat. Yeah, I mean, if you showed those pictures of them like opening presents on Christmas Day or yep. being in Halloween without any other like dialogue or context, you'd be like, so these are lesbians. Yeah, if you were like just if you would texted your mom and been like hey what's this picture look like and it's like it looks like an interracial couple with their daughter yep that's about it because that's what that shit is you don't hang out on christmas with your friends kids you do if you live together right why would you live together because you're in love (laughs) i mean maybe i don't know i mean they don't say it in the film but they don't not say it which I think is also important. Because they could just give her some random dude to make out with one time or have one throwaway line about the dudes that one or another of them dated, but they don't. There's none of that. Mm. So, and they've done it in other Marvel movies. Cough, cough, Joss Whedon trying to get Black Widow and Bruce together. There was no reason for that. So. Yeah, I mean, that was very forced. We didn't need it. Yeah, they tend to, to make the heterosexuality clear. So when they choose not to make it clear... That what do you call twice. Wanda wanting to fuck Vision, though? Listen, we all fantasize about a great sex robot, and I feel like Vision would be a great sex robot. I don't know about that. He can go through things. It's terrifying. Yeah, I mean, how vulgar can I be? <laughs> <laughs> Stop yourself now. I if you have to ask that question. I'm just imagining <laughs> that there could be particular advantages to people being able to perhaps get like harder to reach angles on certain internal structures Mm. but see the thing is after he phases he solidifies that means he takes up all of that space no i feel like he could probably be selective about that or he could just keep phasing up into like a layer of i don't know i don't know if that's how i mean he's powered by an infinity stone who knows So like yeah literally who knows but still i wouldn't and it's not like you gotta worry about him like not lasting long enough you know what i mean so he's a robot can he even orgasm that's I don't think he bleeds. Right. So there's no way he can jizz. So <laughs> that sounds great. I guess. I, don't I mean, know. he's he like doesn't weird have and a... red, but that's okay. Well, but I mean, there's the time where he looked like Paul Bettany. Right. Who's like, okay. <laughs> he's like handsome for a deeply British man. <laughs> hey, his guess. teeth ain't fucked up. Yeah. But I think that that might actually be recent dental work. I want to say the last movie I saw Paul Bettany in, them teeth were not straight. I don't know. But that's okay. He's a great actor. I just don't think he's particularly hot. And also, he's so much older than Elizabeth Olsen. It's weird. I get very tired of watching, like, beautiful 20-something women in their prime dating these, like, mediocre-looking white men who are 30 years older than them. Well, Vision's not even a man. So then why does he look so old? 
I don't know. If you were like, I'm going to choose a human persona atop my robot thing so that I can go out with Elizabeth Olsen and not have anyone worry. Why would you choose someone who looks like her dad? I don't know. Like, Ask him that, not me. <laughs> I would just, you know, reprogram my hairline to not be quite so receding. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, who would choose, if you had all of your druthers, who would be like, I want to look like Paul Bettany? Come on. I, also, come on. this is savage. <laughs> And Paul Bettany is going to listen to this at some point and be like, my hairline's not that far back, is it? It is, and that's fine, and I respect you, Paul <laughs> Bettany. You're a wonderful actor. He's going to get hair plugs now. No, don't do that. There's no reason. Just shave it, honestly. Just, like, shave it. And he's rich enough that he can afford natural-looking hair plugs. Oh, that's true. Um, well, then get natural-looking hair plugs, <laughs> but, but still, if Paul Bettany could have a different face, I bet he would. Like a younger, handsomer face. That's... That, you can't just go around saying that. <laughs> Come on. You wouldn't be like, I'm going to casually be Jason Momoa or I'm going to casually look like Chris Evans. If, I, if you could reprogram your whole body, you would you really <laughs> pick Paul Bettany out of everybody? Like I wouldn't, but you can't say <laughs> he wouldn't want to be himself. Yeah. That's not okay. But he's not himself. He's Vision. He's a robot. Yeah, but Paul Bettany plays him. So the easiest thing was like, oh, we're just not going to put the Vision makeup on you today. I know, but they, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. It would have been more work for him to be someone else. Because then they'd have to vote, like, do his voiceover and change, like, and make whoever who's playing him sound like Paul Bettany. It just made more sense. It's like, we got too much CGI in here. Thor gets blasted by a star. (laughs) It'll kill you only if I die. That's what kill you means. Peter Dinklage in a solid minor role on that. (laughs) Just, like, really killing it. Doing dra- dramatic monologue, but also bring in the comedy. I was like, Peter Dinklage. He's great. My favorite Game of Thrones related thing, speaking of Peter Dinklage, is when someone redid the Game of Thrones theme just saying Peter Dinklage. That's so old at this point. I know, but I still think about it every time I hear the theme <laughs> in my head. I'm going, Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, <laughs> Peter Dinklage. In my head every time. I mean, you can do that with any four syllable thing. That's true, but it's especially good in the Game of Thrones. <laughs> I mean, song. that's fair. Um, it's what really matters. But yeah. Um, we keep getting off track. We do. So, sorry Captain Marvel. Unless you have anything specific and I'll just listen for a second. I mean, not for, like, I just think it was weird that people thought she was very stoic and didn't have any emotion when she did. And also, like, that's just superheroes sometimes are very stoic and, like, we gotta do a mission. Right. So why does it matter that she's like that when she's in the Air Force, part of the Kree military... Right, like, unless that's a criticism you've voiced about Captain America and Black Widow and Mm -hmm. Hawkeye and literally every military and Boar Shield character that has ever been in the Marvel Universe, then it's a totally illegitimate criticism of Captain Marvel. Um, And then, I don't know, somebody, like, there's not a lot that, I mean, the movie's an origin movie, it's kind of that, I don't know, it's one of the better origin movies in my opinion. I agree. Yeah, I don't know, I got nothing else other than that. Yeah, I mean, I think from, like, just a cinematic perspective, it's, like, better than the first Thor, which I still like, but, like, the first Thor I mean, has, has some 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 rough patches. Is it because it's the first Thor movie? Maybe, but I love the Thor trilogy. I like one of the Thor movies. <laughs> I really will die on the hill that is Thor <laughs> The Dark World. I really like that movie. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, but you're in the very, very, very minority I in that know, book. I know, I know. I even joked about it with my students. I was did getting, they all go, hmm. The ones who knew were like, really? <laughs> and I was like, that's fine. Just remember I hold your grades, so know that. And they were like, okay, totally noted. We won't argue. And I was like, thanks. Um, no, I would never threaten my students' grades. Just like for... Just, I mean, I did say that to them, but we all knew it was a joke. Um... But yeah, I used it. I had I was like teaching them how to do an annotated bibliography. Sorry if anyone just had like horrible flashbacks just then, but um I was teaching them how to do an annotated bibliography, so I did an example using Thor and I was saying like the reason why I would want to cite Thor is because I would be making uh the argument that the Thor trilogy is the most underrated group of Marvel movies. Um I don't know that they're underrated. I think they're rated right where they're supposed to be. I think they're deeply underrated. <laughs> Again, this is the hill I will die on. Uh, and um, It's a lonely hill. <laughs> it's a lonely hill. There's dozens of you. I just think that Thor The Dark World is better than Iron Man 2. Like, if we're just stacking Iron Man 2 is not good. 
I know, but it's it, <laughs> it's people not... still like it better than Thor: The Dark World, and I just don't think that tracks. I don't think it tracks. I don't think it makes any damn sense. I just don't think I don't think the bar you should be aiming for is <laughs> Iron Man Two. <laughs> okay, you're not wrong, <laughs> but yeah. So I, I told my students like, okay, this is the argument I'm making. Here's the source I would cite, and here's you know why I would want to use this source, which would be the film, and how I might use it as part of the annotation. And they all were like, cool, cool, cool. We get what you're trying to teach us. But additionally, what's your opinion on Thor? And I was like, I will die on this hill. (laughs) (laughs) With me and 11 other people. (laughs) Not me. Yeah, just, no, just me. Yeah, you. It might be just me, but that's fine. (laughs) I don't know. I think there's probably people out there that, like I said, dozens of people out there that think Thor The Dark World's good. And some of it is just because it's such an interesting, like, way of doing mythology while also doing superhero stuff. Again, a hill I will die on. <laughs> I don't know. I really will just, like, love that forever. That's fine. It's like they took that joke in Avengers that Tony says, like, Doth mother know you weareth her drapes? And then they just, like, made that into a movie, and I really like Which it. is not... That's it's not like, what Chris Hemsworth is good at. <laughs> well, yes. If you view it as a little campy, then I think it actually is kind of good. All right, listen. I'm You're never going to convince making you. making excuses for I'm it. I'm never going to convince you, but I know it's true in my heart. <laughs> Look, you don't like Winter Soldier, so it's like, because it's garbage. So. The movie or him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, then you're just empirically The fight scenes wrong. are great, but like, what's that dialogue? What's what's that script? Because I fall asleep every time I watch that movie. I have never successfully watched the whole movie at one time. That's too bad. Like, and that, and I love superhero stuff. Same. I got through the Daredevil arc that was all about Elektra. What? If I got through that... Also better than Thor The Dark World. You're just so... <laughs> Christof- Christopher Eccleston is in Thor The Dark World. Do you understand the gravitas that man has? He's he didn't get to do anything as mm. that dark elf. He, it was great. And... <laughs> you know he didn't get to do anything. He didn't get to do perhaps as much as I would have wanted. But <laughs> if I were in charge of the Marvel movies, they would look a lot different. So. You mean they would have more than just Loki as good villains? Yes. <laughs> and now Thanos? And it's Killmonger. About it. Killmonger is good. Well, yeah, but he didn't... Ex- Killmonger and I wasn't a Jude thing. Law and Captain Marvel was a good well, villain. Yeah. I think perhaps... he turns heel. Yeah, in a good way. Like, I feel like you kind of do believe him in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I just was tipped off because it was like, in order to be a good soldier, you must have zero emotion. And I was like, oh, this is a movie with a lot of women involved in it. So that's... That's the villain. Found him. I mean, um, that's a thing that they say cliched, like, in a lot of stuff. Yeah, but it feels particularly important if you're going to have a female protagonist, right? Where, like, like the reason why a lot of women are not put in those positions of power is because we're told that we're too emotional. Which is also some BS, because I've seen, like, the Incredible Hulk's whole thing is the angrier he is, the stronger right. he is. <laughs> the whole, his whole thing is he can't control his emotions. So, yeah. like, what's the truth? Um <laughs> And then there's been so many different iterations of if you get pissed off, you're stronger than someone. Yep. There's fucking... And I'm like, it just doesn't apply to... Cartoons. Like, what's the truth? Like, comics. Anime. Yeah. So I My think- favorite thing growing up was Dragon Ball Z. And the only reason somebody went Super Saiyan, which is an evolution of their power, is because their friends died and they got pissed off. Yeah. That's it. Yep. <laughs> it's because they lost control of their emotions. Right. So it's like a silly premise on its face. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I felt like the, for me, the best moment in Captain Marvel that wasn't like a joke was uh, when Jude Law is like, now you're going to fight me and prove to me you can win without your powers. And she just like hits him with a photon blast and it's like, I have nothing to prove to you. And yeah. I was like, hell yes! Like, I mean, the only reason high. that was he was doing that is because he couldn't win. Right. If she did that. He's literally, like, basically groveling. Yeah, he's point. trying to bait her into fighting him. And Jude Law's doing really well. He's got, like, a lot of layers going on in that, like, little monologue he mm-hmm. has. And I just was like, Jude Law, look at you. You're so cute. You really mm-hmm. bring in some chops. I mean, he's... Yeah, he's yeah. not a bad actor. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing is, a lot of times I feel like in these movies, unless you're... Like, unless they just have this casting that's, like, out of this world, like Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, especially some of the satellite characters that we probably will never see again, they're not usually the ones really stealing the show with high-quality acting. Mm. Um, But Jude Law was, like, really, really killing it. And I was like, look at you go, Jude Law. Yeah. The funny thing is, before the movie came out, people thought he might have been a Kree. Mm. 
Yep. I mean, not a crate, a, a scroll. scroll. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good, interesting yeah. little plot line. But instead, it, no, it's just the Kree are genocidal. Yeah, maniacs, which we knew from Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, yeah, I mean, we knew it from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Guardians. Guardians. Because, like, it's like Yondu's, like, I'm a Kree that, like, was banished because I didn't do this or whatever. Yeah. And then from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we knew the Kree were doing, like, weird experiments on humans back yeah. in the Stone Ages. Yeah. And stuff like that, and which is why we get the Inhumans. Yeah, um, and the Kree are characters in some of the later seasons of Agents of Shield. Oh yeah, there's the future one. That's Agents the season. I, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. That's one of the seasons I wasn't remembering. Is mm. when they accidentally go to the future, or not even accidentally. They get abducted at the end of the Ghost Rider season, yeah. and then they're in the future. And they're in the future, but they think they're on an alien planet when actually it's just the future. Yeah. On Earth. Um, and the Kree are characters, and they're horrible. They're yeah. all evil. So, yeah. you know, so that we, I felt like the meta, if you had the meta knowledge, you yeah. already from the jump were like, Kree? Like, yeah. uh. Noble warrior heroes? I'm like, hmm, you mean people who do the genocide and all of the experiments on people? And I mean, to be slave fair. Trade? So, um. In the comics, the scrolls are evil. Like, just. Right. So. Well, and I was perfectly willing to believe, oh, these are two evil groups fighting each other. Sounds yeah. great. Captain Marvel can beat both the asses. Yeah. But. Turns out. Turns out not so much. Scrolls are refugees. Which I thought was like a really poignant yeah. moment. Yeah. I liked that. Yeah. And that actor that played like the main scroll dude was funny as hell. I can't remember his name, but apparently he's Australian. So people were like, he got to use his Australian accent for once. They were like hyped about that. Yeah. He was really funny. Mm. Um the, when he shows up and he like sips the drink out of the straw, <laughs> <It's so good. laughs> and they try to hand like the flurkin comes over. He's like, "Ah, get the thing away from me!" And so they just hold the flurkin up to try yeah. to like freak him out. That's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, but this is going about hour twenty now at this all point. Right. I think this is a good stopping point. Cool. Kind of. I mean, it was all over the place, but that's yeah. how usually how this goes. So I'm fine with it. Cool. I hope um, you're all entertained. Thanks for having me for a third time now. I think so. Third Maybe time? fourth. Maybe I don't fourth. Know. I don't know. It's hard to keep track. Yeah. I live with you. We hang out, so. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening, guys. And if you enjoyed that podcast, you can listen to any of the other ones with Allie in it. They, I don't know that I've titled them, that you're in them. But if I'm in the description. Oh, you are? Okay. Basically, read the description. If it has anything to do with superheroes in the title... She's going to be in it. Yeah. Um, any other podcast is usually with me and Pixelated Apollo. Um, except for last week's podcast, which was with me and Moggy, uh, which was really fun, even though I was cracked up on caffeine. Um, it was pretty adorable. I was fucking scatterbrained. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah. And then, so, uh, sneak peek. Not really, because her podcast is going to come out before this one. Cause this goes up Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, not sneak peek. Uh with those is patron only we did i was on her podcast today as of recording april 17th on a wednesday mm-hmm. and that was really fun because i wasn't completely caffeinated out of my mind mm-hmm. and got to be more present it was really fun uh but yeah so that was fun uh, if you like the podcast and you somehow got to hear without knowing how or you skip to the end for some reason uh it's the polishing podcast everywhere that matters stitcher spotify iTunes, Google Play, and the Podbean app, or just Podbean in general. Um, search The Polishing Podcast if you want to follow the podcast on Twitter to see you receive any updates on it. Uh, if it may or may not be late, uh, it's at Polishing Pod. It's at symbol P O L I S H I N G P O D. Uh, you can follow me at Twitter at Nico All Powerful. That's N I C O A L L P O W E R F U L. And I also have a YouTube and Twitch. Sometimes I stream in the morning when I'm playing the Division 2 and I'm just grinding for exotic weapons. So that's fun if you want to come hang out. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this episode of the podcast. Hope you enjoyed our ramblings about superhero stuff because Trent doesn't like it, so we don't talk about it, <laughs> which is fair. If he, you don't go see the movies, I don't want to try to talk to him about them. It makes no goddamn sense. Uh, but yeah. If do you want to plug your Twitter or anything? Uh, yeah, I guess you can find me on Twitter at Ali Mac. Yeah, I usually talk about 
um, grad stuff. things <laughs> or graduate school because I'm in graduate school and I'm also a teacher. So if you are a teacher and you want to talk about teaching, I would love it if you would follow me on Twitter. Or if you are a former student, because most of us have been a student like either now or in the past. Um, I know a hit bun- me up on Twitter and, and tell me your feels. I'm always willing to talk about teaching because it's what I do I was going to say, I know life. T-Rex, he's a student. He's in college. Hmm. Um, I T-Rex has strong opinions and I would like to hear them. I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know either. I hope I hope he does. I mean, I don't know. yeah. Find, some... Follow me on Twitter, T Rex. <laughs> I, mean, I like all of your funny jokes on the, in replies to Nico's tweets. So um, <laughs> I feel like we'd be friends anyway. So, uh, um, but it's at A L I M A C Y E A H at Ali Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be the end of episode. Unfortunately, no Josephine's corner this time. I'm not going through and doing the cell phone thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite part about last week's episode. It's because that was your idea. <laughs> I know. I was really proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and God bless.